Well, thank you guys so much for having me. Um, again, my name is Michael Rowley. I did meet Brent my first year working <clears throat> with the Department of Natural Resources out of college. I actually worked in the fisheries program. I'm now in the water quality program. Um, so the big difference with uh, fisheries program is, you know, they look at the fish community and all of our game fish. And obviously today's talk will be mainly trout in our the water resources and water quality program. We look at everything that's in the in the stream and that's all your forage fish, if there is any, um, all the game fish. And then we do take water samples. Uh, sometimes we do temperature monitoring and uh, we do a lot of bug collection to, to look at the macro and bird community. Uh, my pictures, obviously, I like to throw right, this is my little plug. I am a big fan of sturgeon, and I'm on a volunteer tagging sturgeon tagging project for the Lower Chippewa uh, River here. So this was um, pretty fun summer. The last two years, I've gotten over 100 sturgeon, and have tagged probably about 200 of the 250 or so I've caught. So <laughs> that's my little plug for my my picture here. Um, we have a great tons of great resources with streams and rivers around our area. Um, so with that being said, I'm just going to kind of go over a lot of the streams that I've been on. I'll have some pictures um, from most of them. Um, but I will also, there are some streams that I, I know of based from our fisheries crew that does a lot more work on them than I do. Um, so I won't have pictures on there, but I do have maps kind of showing where they're at. And I was telling Brent, aside from a few of these streams, a lot of these are untouched. Uh, I mean, or they only get hit like maybe for the first week of like fishing opener. Um, so we do, um, you know, several of these surveys like throughout these watersheds. And I mean, it's just kind of, it's pretty crazy some the amount of fish some of these streams have uh, trout. So this is the area that I cover, <laughs> quote unquote. Um, outlined in red, this is the West District, um, Eau Claire being the regional headquarter office. Um, we do have three other uh, water quality streams and rivers biologists in this area, but they cover a smaller subset of counties but I do, I lead the field work for all these counties um, for the West District. So I do get a lot of windshield time, but I do get to see a lot of country, uh, which is really nice. And I was able to last second, both the fisheries biologists um, out of the Eau Claire office and the Baldwin office. So um, I see like Chippewa, Eau Claire, Pierce, Pepin, Dunn, St. Croix, and can't get the other county, a handful of counties. Uh, they did send me their 2022 um, trout survey numbers. They get a lot more in depth with their numbers. So that's the first slide here. This is from Joseph Gerbyshack. He's the fisheries biologist um, for, I think the counties are listed on the top here. Um, I'm trying to move my... Uh, so just looking at these from a glance, I was trying to get, trying to ask him what these, you know, the fish for mile got. So this all column is what it would come to. Our station lengths are decided by it's three times the average stream width. <laughs> I'm sorry, 35 times the average stream width and that gets our station length. But all these individual numbers are what um, they actually collected the day of the survey. So in these, in Joseph's counties, I'm gonna say um, this Bears Grass Creek, third one down is, um, it does have potential for, I mean, it is a probably our trophy brook trout water. Um, so this year they didn't get any over 15, but they have caught several 15 inches, 15 inch brook trout in this stream. And they did say a lot of them have shown that they have been caught before. So they have been caught from anglers released successfully. Um, so that's pretty cool. I have not yet even been on this one and it is probably literally only 15 minutes from town. <laughs> um, 
so like I said, that's and then most of our waters are a lot of them are brown trout dominated, but a lot of the Chippewa County streams do have a good mix. Um, Sand Creek is probably our trophy brown <laughs> stream in our district. So you can see down here, I don't know how blurry or if it's showing up for you guys very well. Uh, they got 69 browns over 18 inches at this one site here on Sand Creek. And that's pretty consistent every year when they survey it. They, like I said, it's probably our trophy brown trout water for this area. Um, <clears throat> that's really, and then this Elk Creek is, I'll touch more on this one because we do have what we call a trend site. Our program surveys this every year um, at a different crossing than what Fisheries does. <clears throat> but this Elk Creek has an incredibly high um, natural reproduction. Uh, most of these streams do have so yeah, most of these streams will be class one streams. Um, there are a few class two mixed in and maybe one or two class threes, but for the most part, it is, it really is pretty amazing. Um, then Casey Yellily out of Baldwin, she covers the far Western counties of the West District. She just got this to me today. Um, so I don't know how many of you have fished around Pierce and St. Croix County, but that is probably where <clears throat> the best, I would say, and for the Northern Driftless, I, I would probably call it, um, where the best trout waters are with the Connecticut, the Rush, and the, the Trim Bell also to, um, but yeah, we'll touch some more on some of these as well. But again, if you're ever up in the area, um, you can request this data from the fisheries biologist. They should have this all in hand. Or you can have Brent ask me, I can probably just email this to you guys. <laughs> um, so diving in, this is Elk Creek. This is right, right out of Eau Claire. Um, this is a picture of tiger trout. We got this. Uh, this summer during a survey at our trend site. And we actually think we got two on this survey this year. And we actually think it's the same two we got last year. Um, we shot two young of the year um, tiger trout at three and a half inches last year. And this year we got two tiger trout at five and a half inches this year in the exact same spot. <laughs> so we're <clears throat> pretty confident or hopeful that it's maybe the same two. Um, Again, uh, and this um, Elk Creek doesn't have many other species other than brooks and brown trout. Um, but there are some trout waters we'll get to later in the presentation that has a wide variety of species, um, which is always interesting too. So that's Elk Creek right out of town. Uh, the Trimbell River in Pierce County. Um, this is our program's uh, targeted watershed assessment this summer. Um, I think we did 18 sites up and down the Trim Bell. Uh, pretty interesting part of the Trim Bell is almost all of it is nearly restored now or has had some form of trout restoration. There's, it seems like there's very few stretches that does not have it. The picture on the right is it is actually a picture that has not been restored, um, but still has some pretty incredibly high trout numbers um, in it. Um, this is some of the trout we got from it. The middle one, I believe, is probably from a hooking mortality from a fisherman. Um, the far left one was the lowest stretch on the trim bell um, on State Highway 35 crossing that had an incredible amount of trout. There's no habitat work done down there. Um, there it did appear like there was some fishing pressure, but uh, not a whole lot. So that, I believe that was an 18 and a half inch brown. And we missed a few others that were in the same category. The stream was just a little too wide and they skirted around us. And then the far right, we're kind of shocked with this one because there are, there's not many brook trout in the trim bell until you get to the headwaters. 
and uh, that was an 11 inch tiger trout we pulled in a middle upper reach of the trim bell. Uh, the Rush River in Pierce and St. Croix counties. I've only been on two sites, a headwater site, which is very interesting for being a very kind of pristine, high density trout water. The, the headwaters, you wouldn't, you wouldn't guess that they would hold a lot of trout. Um, it's very slow. There's actually quite a few beaver dams up above, but it does actually get better the farther down stream you go. Uh, this was a brown we captured by State Highway 10 crossing. It had just kind of unique uh, orange patch on its chin there. Um, I believe so for our program, the max station length we go is about 400 meters. And we had to stop and process trout, I think seven times, um, just because there was an insane number of trout. Um, in these waters, and that's not even getting probably half of them. <laughs> um, so here's some pictures from the upper uh, site that we did. So like I mentioned, it would, it is slower water, which would probably, you know, kind of relates more to, there's not a whole big influence of springs. So we do get some, um, a little bit more variety of fish up there with the slightly warmer waters. On the left, we have an Iowa darter, and the middle is, a rainbow darter. Um, and all these species I'm kind of telling you about, each one of these other species relates to water quality in a way that they, in their responses to environmental degradation and um, different water pollution. Um, so we'll see it in some. So like an example of fish that can uh, tolerate, let's say like poor water conditions and environmental degradation are like creek chubs and white suckers and like common shiners, they kind of don't care. And then it's kind of, um, once you get into really cold water, then you're, we're only seeing trout and mottled sculpin are basically your only two, um, but that's good. That's still a good sign because those really are about the only fish that should be in very cold water. And then a big uh, 17 inch brown too, we pulled from that upper site. Oh uh, yeah, Katy Creek here. There's been a lot of uh, stream work done on a lot of stream restoration work on this one. The picture is the valley that um, opens up. They did some pretty extensive habitat work in a number of years ago. Um, but I've actually fished from the downstream bridge, which is on County Highway P, I believe. And if you walk it all the way up, this is what it opens up to. I mean, it's just, it's a beautiful area. Um, and that's one of our trend sites we go to every year. And the fisheries program is trying a, uh, I think they're on year two or three, a brown trout removal on Katie in this stretch to help, try to help bring back the brook trout population in more numbers. Um, the only thing we noticed <laughs> is it made the trout bigger. <laughs> <laughs> and we have seen, we'd have seen maybe a slight increase in brook trout overall. Um, but the only downside is that there is another source river with the old galley that's just to the south of Katy Creek that has almost a strictly brown trout population. So they're free, they're free to move to exchange. So it's not probably going to be 100% effective, but um, the fish biologist is, I think, believe hoping to increase brook trout numbers. In Katy, in Katy Creek. <clears throat> um, so these are some some of the trout from Katy. You got brown. The middle is a mottled sculpin. Um, they're good good sign of uh, of good water quality with in regards to water temperature and responses to environmental degradation. They do need that clean, cold, clear water with hard substrate. And nice uh, brook trout also from Katy. And we have seen a couple tiger trout in this stream as well. Um, we're actually kind of more surprised because I feel like this is one of our more balanced streams um, between numbers at times. We seem to get quite a, a decent amount of brook trout for the for the lower stretch, let's call them. Um, so these are ones I haven't technically surveyed, but I do know. Um, there are quite a few trout in these systems and are 
some of the higher um, probably higher ranking on folks lists around our area. We got the Connecticut River, St. Croix and Pierce counties. There are two dams in River Falls. Um, there's great trout fishing above, below, and apparently in between. I didn't did not know that, but when they drew down the second one, they're from the lower dam. There apparently were a ton of trout in between the dams yet too, but I believe there are plans to remove both dams in River Falls um, in, I think within the next 10 years, if I remember correctly. But yeah, very beautiful. The lower stretch is um, very scenic, very beautiful. Um, and then we got Wilson Creek in Dunn County. This is just to the west of Eau Claire by Menominee. Um, again, the upper upper stretches are probably the best bet. Um, this is the limiting factor probably is um, there's a lot of sand in, in Wilson. Um, so the spawning grounds are pretty much just the upper headwaters and some of the tributaries. But there are some pretty good trout numbers, and they have start. They have done some uh, restoration work recently in that area. Um, and this is a big tributary to Wilson. This is Anna's Creek in Dunn County. I believe I had pictures on my other phone, but we did get two 13-inch brook trout and four 13-inch walleyes <laughs> in Annis. Um, so that was a pretty, pretty cool combination. Um, the walleyes do have free range to come up and spawn from Lake Menomen. Uh, it's an impoundment of the Red Cedar River, right in Menominee. They can go up Wilson Creek and then go up Annis or keep going up Wilson um, if they're looking to spawn. So we do see some warm water species on these lower stretches of Wilson and Annis Creek. And then just the south of that, on the other side of 94, we have Gilbert Creek in Duncan County. I've not been on this one, but I drive by it a lot. And most of it is restored now. They're working on the upper headwaters pretty recently. I think they're finishing that up. Um, this would be, I always say, a pretty interesting spot if you do enjoy pheasant hunting, because there is a small stretch <laughs> in there maybe i forgot how big it is if it's 40 or 60 acres but it does have hold a decent number of roosters in it so you can do kind of a, a two for one uh fishing and hunting excursion if you're ever in the area uh sand creek this is the one i mentioned that's probably our brown trout trophy waters um this is upper upper dunn county and let's see, it'd be Western Chippewa County. It just barely goes in. Um, the lower stretch I, that before it hits the Red Cedar was recently restored. It runs through the town of Sand Creek and there are quite a few large, large ones in there. I have heard that a lot of the big browns will go to the mouth out into the Red Cedar during the winter. And um, I've heard you can catch some pretty big ones like during the catch and release season um, where it dumps into the red cedar but it would be I think fairly tricky because the red cedar does freeze and get ice chunks pretty consistently. Uh, South Fork of the Hay is another one of those it's a very sandy system but I believe this is almost one of the, the few almost strictly brook trout rivers that we have which is kind of odd I'm sure there are browns on it. Uh, my first year I was in the water quality. I did do some surveys on it. <clears throat> um, but I honestly, I don't remember much because after a while, all these streams sometimes will blend together. <laughs> and all the pictures are on my last phone I had. <laughs> I couldn't transfer over. Um, but the South Fork of the Hay, there are some very good, um, very good areas on that. Um, I believe it's, I didn't label on the map, but there's a Thatcher, Thatcher Park, I believe it's called. It's a great spot to start. Um, and there's a lot of good, nice brook trout in that stretch around that part there. Uh, here's the bear's grass I was talking about. This is probably a trophy brook trout water in our area. It's a very sh uh, short stream uh, that flows into the Eau Claire River, just east of Eau Claire here, east of Fall Creek. Um, there is another 
there are a few other trout streams that area fall creek diamond valley and there's one more but they are small bodies of water um, pretty tough to fish i think a lot of them have had restoration substrate isn't ideal in most of these a lot of them are silt a lot of agriculture in this area so there's a lot of runoff um, but there are there's some good fishing fall creek does have large brook trout but it's very difficult to fish and there's really no access for bank walking it's all have to wade um, but bears grass i do believe it does have easement spots to it and there are restored areas and i'm from the, the few spots i have seen i do believe there there is like it does have um, some natural reproduction in this one uh, so getting down um, a little bit further south to the more of the drift list, we have Bostwick Creek in La Crosse County. Um, we did a targeted watershed assessment on this in 2018, I believe. Um, this was, we did several sites on this. I would say the upper, say 75% of <laughs> this river is strictly trout. There are no other forage fish whatsoever and we were pretty astounded like either no, not a single white sucker not a single even like brooks stickleback or anything i mean it was strictly mainly brown trout um pretty impressive numbers this is a headwater site on bostwick uh, we had gotten permission from the farmer uh, to go in and do a survey up here um he did have cattle but it looked like they had a a pretty massive range so there wasn't too bad of erosional areas you can kind of see there is some good substrate mixed in there <clears throat> and they are doing um they completed one habitat work area last year and i believe they have three more areas of habitat work they're going to try to do to help reduce bank erosion in the system about the upper middle sections have been experiencing quite a bit in the farming area and the farmers have been pretty um, pretty good in all for um, doing this kind of restoration to help uh, stabilize the banks in this area so this is I, was, I think I was telling Brent this this was our one of our lower sites and I wish I had a picture um, but we had this is the lowest site before it hits the little lacrosse river we had a brook trout, a brown trout, a muskie, and a smallmouth bass um, all at once. And I couldn't find the picture of it. Um, so obviously the left picture is a brook trout, the middle a muskie, and the right is actually a banded darter. Um, there's kind of more of a larger river darter that we see, but it's kind of kind of cool. You can see some of these trout waters once you hit a certain area or thermal level it can kind of support just a wide variety of species uh, more creek i think uh, brent mentioned some may have been on this uh, this was we surveyed in 2017 i believe um, probably the most diverse fish species uh, streams we did um, mainly in the lower uh, in the lower reaches but also probably had some of the best quality for size on brown trout i would say um, the main streams on moore creek were, were mainly brown but if any of the trib tributaries which i don't think there were too many there was one just outside of norwalk um, a pretty little one that i almost looked restored but that one had almost strictly brook trout in it um, but we had several browns over 16 inches when we did our surveys um, on Moore Creek. So like I said, this had quite a variety. Um, the left picture is a northern hog sucker. Um, it's actually a little bit better indicator of water quality um, than the white sucker is. Um, they kind of prefer more faster water, hard substrate, cleaner water, a little bit colder water. Um, the top right is a 19 inch brown. Um, we had gotten actually just above the used to be, I think there's a meat process processing plant. Um, so that brown came just above that. And the bottom is a um, 
an American brook lamprey. Um, so we do have, we have five native species of lampreys in Wisconsin. Um, two of them are parasitic, parasitic natives. And then we have the parasitic non-native, um, can I give it the one that's in the Great Lakes, uh, the sea lamprey, uh, the parasitic non-native. But we do have, like I said, five species of native lampreys. And that was an adult American brook lamprey that we got um, in Moore Creek. Uh, a few other interesting fish from Moore Creek we got. The left one is a central stone roller. Uh, the middle one is a, is a, uh, a stone cat. The upper right is a tadpole mad tom, and the lower right is a long nosed dace. Um, the stone cats and tadpole mad toms do are a good indicator of some good water quality. They can be sensitive to environmental degradation um, and kind of need that cleaner, faster water, and they kind of hide under um, the big substrate like rocks and boulders. Uh, long nosed dace we typically find only in fast and faster waters, and they can be um, warm water and cold water species. Um, so I threw in some honorable mentions and just some other random streams, ones we kind of um, just randomly get to. Um, so this is overlooking Lowe's Creek. This is probably one of my favorite early season trout water. It's right in Eau Claire. Um, I'm, I, I might have done that. So I, I knew the landowners at the time when I took this picture and they said I could I could hunt back here and I could fish and walk up here. So, <clears throat> excuse me. When I was fishing this one day, I saw it looked like big ice cave. So I crawled up in there and took a picture of Lowe's Creek. Um, here's one of the browns I got out of Lowe's Creek. Like I said, the probably the best water right in, is right in town, um, right along 37, 94 and double I. Um, <clears throat> seem to hold the higher densities of trout. This trout is obviously pretty skinny, but I have seen um, a couple 16 to 18 inches pulled out of here. And this is, I believe, class two trout water. So there is some stocking done uh, in here. Um, going back down to La Crosse area, this is one of our trend sites we sample every year. It's an unnamed tributary to Mormon Cooley in La Crosse County. Um, my first year we sampled it. It was pretty cool. We got young of the year tiger trout, brown trout, and brook trout, um, which is the picture on the left there. Um, kind of just goes to show how important any of these tributaries are to these bigger um, systems. Um, obviously, brooks and browns do use them, and it's important to keep these little tributaries, um, you know, protected for the sake of for spawning fish. Uh, this is Wamandy Creek in Buffalo County. If you were to drive by it, you would say there is probably no way in heck there is any trout in there. because so that's what I thought <laughs> when, when we went here. It's pretty wide, shallow, and sandy. Um, we did get um, this 19-inch brown out of there along with some 12-inch brook trout as well. Um, I, I don't know if it's stocked or not. I can't say for sure. I did have a coworker to go back and fish it. And he actually did catch um, a few nice fish, um, just targeting any, you know, any little deeper, deeper areas and spot with any sort of cover. So there are, there are fish in there, but it's kind of one of those, I believe that's very overlooked um, in our area in Buffalo County, just because it doesn't really look like it has the makings to be a great, um, great trout stream. Uh, Traverse Valley Creek in uh, Tremplow County. This is just outside, uh, this would be southwest of Independence and northwest of Arcadia. Um, another interesting body of water where you just, you know, one of those overlooked places. Probably doesn't see any fishing pressure, but it is close to the Tremplow River. It flows into the Tremplow River, which flows into the Mississippi River, which really isn't that far away. So we did get one of our parasitic native species that was actually attached to a white sucker. Um, this is a chestnut lamprey. Um, this is probably the most common um, parasitic lampreys I, I've seen in, in our water bodies. It's one of the few times, I, probably the first time I've actually seen one in listed trout waters. Um, normally we see them attached 
um, to fish in our bigger rivers, um, to like carp and suckers and other rough fish, but we didn't see any. We did catch two this day, but they weren't attached to any of the trout. Um, but again, that's another one of those overlooked systems that doesn't have any trout habitat restoration work on it. Substrate is mostly sand and some silt, but if you do find the cover, that's kind of the key. I mean, they do hold some pretty impressive fish. Um, and that's the lacrosse um, streams and rivers biologist, Kurt Rasmussen. So he covers that area. Uh, Buffalo, Trempolo, the cross in Monroe County. Um, this was a new one for us, another wide variety. This is Brewer Creek in Juneau County. Um, this was this year we had a targeted watershed assessment on Brewer and Webster Creek, which I believe Webster is just to the north of this. Um, the upper reaches did hold trout, um, Albrook trout. This was a lower stretch. Um, very another interesting mixed bag with bowfin, a grass pickerel, and a brook trout. Kind of another one of those odd combinations that we've never seen before. Grass pickerel and bowfin obviously like um, usually like warmer water um, and slower water. But I think being so close to the Lemon Weir River, which is a very uh, warm water river, um, I'm sure a lot just uh, came out from there. Grass pickerel you don't see too often other than in small streams too. And if you ever do catch one, you can tell because they have a really dark teardrop below their eye. And this is my last slide there. Um, I just want to throw in a quick little video of what shocking looks like. This is on the trim bell this, so, oh, this summer. Sorry if that was really loud. Um, but yeah, so I'll <clears throat> let the video play. And so when we're shocking, it's, um, you know, we're just putting out an electric, uh, an electric field and all, I mean, it just stuns those fish in a split second, just enough to turn them over, enough for us to scoop them up. And we have a bucket um, in this boat we're pulling. Um, it's, you know, we don't lose hardly any trout at all during their, these surveys. Um, it's... Like I said, we watch pretty closely. We usually have another person on hand changing the water out. If the tub does get too full, uh, we stop and process as many times as we need need to. Um, I'll play the video again, just uh, you can see. I mean, this the trim bell was pretty wild with trout all that size, all that eight to 12 inch browns. I mean, just everywhere. Um, so yeah, I mean, there is, the, like I said, the trim bell is a new one for me. I've never been on it till this year, but very impressed with numbers on that one. Um, yeah, that is my presentation.